What's up everybody, Jared here with carbuzz.com and today I am bringing you a full walk around and deep dive of the 2022 Hyundai Kona N. This is the sportiest version of Hyundai's subcompact Kona crossover and there is a lot to talk about with this vehicle because I think there is nothing quite like this out on the market right now, nor has there ever been. So let's get into it. So the Kona received a facelift, I believe for the 2022 model year. So the Kona N obviously benefits from that as well, but the Kona N gets some unique styling elements that we're not going to see anywhere else. You still have this split headlight design. So this is actually the turn signal. I think the main headlight is down here, which is kind of a weird look. I know not everybody is a fan of this whole split headlight look. I think it looks fine. It's not my favorite design of Hyundai's, but it's just fine. We've got an N badge here letting us know that this is the sportiest version of Hyundai's Kona, as if you could really miss it because we've got this unique sort of, um, these aren't real uh, slots here, but it's kind of like these uh, fake uh, little slots here in the hood. We also have this red accenting down here, which you can really see because it is accentuated by the fact that this car is finished in black. Unfortunately, the color choices are rather limited here. You can get it in red, uh, which kind of, you know, eliminates that sort of red line down there. You don't notice it as much when the car is finished fully in red. You can also get white, and there's this really nice, like, sonic blue color uh, that's like the signature color. But according to the configurator, that color is no longer available. I'm not really sure what is up with that. Now, we've got 19-inch wheels, these N wheels. I think they look fantastic. They kind of have, like, a star pattern to them. We've got some red end brakes behind that as well. You can see that uh, some of the body cladding that you get with a normal Kona is body color here on this end model, so full paint color. So that is really going to give this the appearance of being a hot hatchback rather than being like a crossover. And I think that works to the Kona N's advantage. This is a very nice looking vehicle. It is taller than like an Elantra N quite significantly, but it doesn't really feel like it out on the road as we'll talk about earlier. The seating position is higher and the roof line is, you know, several inches. I believe it's about four or five inches taller than an Elantra N, but this does feel like a hot hatchback on the road. We've got more red accenting down here, including a little N logo here on this side skirt. And then back here, we also have some aggressive styling. We've got this really cool uh, spoiler with this cool triangular third brake light that looks very motorsportsy. We've got another N logo down here. Just like the headlights, the taillights are actually split. So we have like our brake lights up here, turn signals down here, it's kind of split up. And then down here, we've got this aggressively sporty rear diffuser. We've got these amazing exhaust tips. Nope, those are not fake, those are real. Uh, and they sound phenomenal. This is one of the best sounding four cylinder engines, if not the best sounding four cylinder that you can buy today. And that includes things like the Porsche Boxster and Jaguar F-Type. I am going to go ahead and say it sounds that good. I'll let you be the judge of that. Um, I'll give you some revving clips and of course you'll hear it out on the road as well. So now let's talk about trunk space. The Kona is a subcompact SUV, so don't expect anything massive back here. I'm actually a little disappointed in how small the Kona is. This is on the larger side of subcompact, but it's fine for the class. Like you shouldn't really be expecting too much more than this. You can fit a couple of uh, smaller suitcases, maybe a large and a small. And then for anything else, you're going to have to fold down those rear seats, which is, you know, to be expected of something like a Kona. Same thing for the rear, rear leg room. I like how a lot of performance cars, they cheap out on the rear seats. I'm looking at you, Honda, with the Civic Type R, but they haven't really done that back here. We still have this sort of leather and suede combination, just like we do on the front with the blue stitching. We'll see a little bit more of that up front. Not a huge amount of leg room, but as you can see, I'm sitting behind my own driving position and I have a decent amount left over. We do have a USB here for charging, no air vents. This is not that type of premium car. And although there is no net on this side, there is a cargo net here on this side, uh, which is quite nice. So that's the back seat. It's, you know, somewhat limited, but you can, of course, fold that down if you want. You know, it's a tight car, so you might have to you know, nudge that a little bit and then it'll go down. And now you'll have uh, a little bit more access to the trunk there. 
All right, so now let's move up front. We do have keyless entry on this car. Uh, it is not the button kind, they've changed it. Uh, so it is now the touch sensor, which is quite nice. We also have remote start. We've got a power seat over here on the driver's side, unfortunately not on the passenger side. That's pretty obvious at this price point. You'll also need to be aware that the materials in here are not super fancy. This is still a lower end Hyundai. So we've got some cheap plastics up here. This is all like sort of one color. There's not a ton of color here. Some of these materials feel kind of cheap, um, but there are some nice materials like these armrests are nice and padded as well. So Hyundai has done a nice mix of materials here. We also get Harman Kardon audio, which is quite nice sounding as standard. Again, there so there are no options on this car. Everything you're seeing comes with the Kona N at all price points, including these really nice end seats. I love these. They are not the most aggressive end seat that you can get, but I think that's fine. I think that really fits the Kona's mission of being a fun, sporty vehicle that you can also take your family in. We've got the cool N logo here with, again, more blue stitching. Suede here. These are heated seats as well. Nice bolstering here on the side, but they are not so aggressive like the seats that are available in the Elantra and the Veloster. I think that is completely fine for me. So now let's get into some of the tech. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the push button start here. And we're gonna talk about what you get here on the Kona. Again, all as standard, nothing you see here is optional. This all comes as part of the Kona package, including this really nice 10.25 inch gauge cluster display. Uh, it is fully digital and we'll talk about how you can sort of change what's on here as well. You can have your basic functions here uh, in the middle, including some N specific ones, oil temperature, a turbo boost gauge, torque gauge, a lap timer, a G meter, and you can mirror that on this screen as well, this 10.25 inch touchscreen. So this is very similar to what you're gonna get in the uh, normal Kona. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, unfortunately not wireless. The bigger Hyundai screen don't have those technologies wirelessly, which is a little bit annoying. You have to plug in, but we do have some N specific functions, including this N mode screen. This is super cool. This is something you would expect to see on a BMW M car. We have our throttle position, oil temperature, engine temperature. We have a lap timer. We have our brake uh, percentage. So you can see I'm pushing the brake. You can see how much of the brake I'm pushing. You can set your different circuits here. If you're going to Homestead Miami, for example, that would be a track that is decently close to me. That is really cool. You have your engine RPMs. It's gonna tell you your gear position, your miles per hour. This is really cool. And then if I scroll Scroll over here, you can set up different custom drive modes, which I'll talk a little bit about later. You've got a bigger G meter right here. I can go ahead and click on that to go ahead and make that full screen. We've got launch control on this car. And then we have a bunch of other performance options like N power shift. You can turn the creep off if you're on the track. You can set the launch control RPM. Some really, really cool functions here on this screen that you're not gonna find on pretty much any other vehicle of this class. Now I should talk about the N-Grin control system. So those are the drive modes. We've got our standard drive mode selector down here and that's gonna let you select from kind of the normal. You've got eco, normal, sport. You can see the gauges uh, change quite a bit. Uh, between these different modes. I quite like the sport gauges as well. The exhaust opens up when you go ahead and put it in sport mode, but those are just kind of the normal sport modes. We also have two buttons right here on the steering wheel. Now these are very similar to the buttons that you'll get on a BMW M car. They have M1 and M2. Of course, these are N1 and N2. Now these are programmable buttons. I can go ahead and hold this and it should bring it up. So I can have it toggling between full N mode or a custom N mode, or I can have it be the starter or the stopper of my lap timer. I can have it just be those normal drive mode buttons. I can customize the left one and the right one. There's a ton of stuff I can do with these buttons. Right now I have it on the toggle mode. So if I go ahead and push this button now, it's going to put us in end mode. So you're going to see the gauges change quite significantly. Now we have our tack right in the middle, as you'd expect from a sports car. And we've got more important performance functions showing like turbo boost gauge, uh, torque, etc. And then if I push that button one more time again, it's going to put me into my custom end mode, which I'll talk to you a little bit later about what that means and why I set that up a little bit differently from the standard end mode. 
in addition to all of that cool performance stuff, we've got a lot of nice luxury functions as well. We've got a ton of safety features. We've got lane keep assist. Uh, we've got automatic emergency rear braking, all of that kind of stuff. The only thing missing from this equation is adaptive cruise control, which no end model currently has. It's kind of a weird omission, but if you're really looking for adaptive cruise control, it's worth noting that you will not find it here on the Kona N. We've also got this red button right here. I'll mention that a little bit later. I'm going to go ahead and save that. It stands for N Grin Shift. It's kind of like that red button from Men in Black. You know, don't push the red button. It's time. Push the red button. That is a recipe for fun, as I will show you a little bit later. We've got automatic climate control, not dual zone, but it is automatic climate control, which is quite nice with nice physical buttons. We have nice physical controls here. I should also mention that below the screen, we obviously have all of these home buttons, a true proper volume knob and a proper tuning knob. I like that Hyundai included all of that stuff. We've got a nice little cubby down here with a wireless charger. We've got a USB port and more outlets as well. There's like a little cubby up here as well. So you can put some like sunglasses or stuff up here and also not disturb your wireless charger, which is quite great. We have another sunglass holder up here. So for a small car, I think that the storage solutions are quite nice. Heated seats, as I mentioned, there's your track and control off button. We've got a specific end uh, shifter with this little blue accent here. We've got our cup holders here, a nice physical handbrake, so you can pull some handbrake turns if you want, and then a little bit more storage in here. So not the most premium cabin that you're going to find, but the tech is really good, and I love that Hyundai packaged all of this standard with no options. All right, so now let's get the Kona N out on the road where we are about to find out why this is probably the most fun little crossover that I've ever driven. And we're gonna start with the engine. It's a two liter turbocharged four cylinder engine, just like the Elantra N has and the Veloster N has. It's actually more related to the Elantra N engine. It's got some updates since the Veloster and that is producing 276 horsepower and 289 pound-feet of torque, which are really good numbers for a vehicle of this size, all going out through Hyundai's latest eight-speed dual clutch that is a wet clutch DCT transmission through front-wheel drive. Unfortunately, none of these end models have uh, front-wheel drive. And the power woohoo, is really good on this car. Zero to 60 is gonna take about 5.2 seconds with launch control. I will try a launch control a little bit later, but it is really impressive how this car puts the power down, even though it's only front wheel drive and not all wheel drive. That's because we've got this end corner carving differential. That's a limited slip differential, an electronic one up front that does a really good job managing the wheel slip as it tries to put all of that power down. Now, I was just doing that in normal mode, but as we saw earlier, we've got all of those different drive modes. So let's go ahead and put it into end mode here. Oh yes, <laughs> you can hear it gets a lot louder. Oh, the cracks and pops. I'm gonna shut up for a second, just so you can hear this engine at work. Get ready. <laughs> it crackles and pops like a rally car. It's amazing how loud Hyundai was able to make this four-cylinder engine. I don't think I've ever driven a four-cylinder car that sounds this good, ever. Little wheel chirp. <laughs> it just puts the biggest smile on my face. I'll never get tired of that. Never. Never once. And then... Oh my God, it's so fun. We've got a little heavier steering. We've got the suspension in its stiffness setting. <laughs> this is not a crossover. This is a hot hatchback. <laughs> oh my God, listen to it. <laughs> I'm sorry to just keep giggling for this whole review. Oh my God, but this just puts such a fun, <laughs> big smile on my face. And if that weren't enough, we've got this button, the NGS button that I mentioned earlier, the big red button like you get in Men in Black. That is the overboost function. So for about 30 seconds, that's gonna give you 10 extra horsepower up to 286 horsepower. And yes, you do really feel uh, the power there. So we're gonna let this car pass and then I'm gonna flip around and we're gonna try doing a launch control. 
So I can show you that. Yep, we've got another car coming here. Wait for it. Oh my God, we have a ton of traffic coming. All right. All right, here's what we're gonna do instead. I'm gonna show you the Engrin shift. So basically, you push this button and we're gonna get over boost. Ready? For 20 seconds. <laughs> oh my God, you feel that. <laughs> the shifts are also gonna be maximized in this mode. <laughs> Nine more seconds. Eight. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and flip it around here so that we can now do a launch control. <laughs> and then, you lose access to the end grin shift for about a minute, but it's still <laughs> really quick. You get all this wiggle from the steering. You can really feel what those front wheels are up to. This thing has such communicative steering and such a communicative chassis as well. It's very firm, but you can feel everything that the car is up to. All right, there we go. Now, let's go ahead and do a launch control. All right, are we ready? Launch control, you can actually set the RPM. I have it set to 3000 RPM. Foot on the brake, foot on the gas. Let's go. Activate, sorry, it wasn't activated, now it is. Ready? There we go. Ooh, a little bit of chirp off the line, but I was able to put that power down just fine. Oh my God, crackles, pops, tons of feel through the steering wheel. I simply adore how this car drives. Downsides, let's talk about the downsides now because you've heard me giggle just enough. When I'm in this end mode, this full end mode, the engine, steering, suspension, everything in its most aggressive settings, this car is extremely firm. I would say too firm uh, for, for most roads. So you can play around with all of those settings. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in custom one. Now this is the mode that I really like. I've tuned it down a little bit. Engine, sport plus mode, steering in sport mode, not sport plus mode, because I think it's a little too heavy in sport plus mode. Suspension, all the way in normal. It's most comfortable setting. It's already quite firm in that. Uh, transmission in sport mode, because I think it's just a little too aggressive for normal traffic in sport plus mode. We've got the ELSD in sport, because uh, I believe in sport plus mode. Um, and it's just a little bit too extreme again. And I've got the traction control in sport mode because if you put it in sport plus mode, it's basically stable in traction control. And then it requires like an extra button push, which I felt was a little bit annoying. And of course that exhaust in full sport plus mode. Now I can have all the fun I was just having, but now it's not beating the crap out of me with the suspension. So I'm having just as good of a time uh, but it's just a little bit softer. Oh my God, I love the steering on this car. It's so good. This is so much more fun than something like a Golf GTI or a Golf R. It's just so much more exciting. The exhaust is better. The steering is better. The chassis is so good. It's much, <laughs> much less comfortable than a GTI or a Golf R. But in, in just the, the ways that matter, the ways that put a smile on your face, this is one of the most entertaining vehicles I've ever driven at any price range. Are there crossovers that are more fun than this? Maybe a Stelvio Quadrifoglio, maybe an Aston Martin DBX, but those are like insanely expensive. Nothing at this $35,000 price point puts as big of a smile on my face as the Kona N. It's, it's just simply hilarious. So if you are, you know, you currently have like an older hot hatchback, a Subaru STI, something like that, and you ha now have kids, a family, and you need like a little bit more space, something with a little bit more ground clearance, et cetera, this is the car, this is it. I would totally recommend this if you're in that sort of market. I guarantee you, you will have just as much fun, if not more, than the hatchback you're trading out for it. All right, so that was the 2022 Hyundai Kona N. Pricing starts at just $34,200, and then that's it. You don't really need to add any options after that. I think the Kona N is a one-of-a-kind vehicle. I don't think there's ever been a little crossover quite like this. And I think if you are in the market for a hot hatch, this definitely needs to be 
on your radar. Let me know what you thought of the 2022 Hyundai Kona N in the comments. And if you want to learn more about this vehicle, be sure to check out carbuzz.com. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Please like it, subscribe, and ring the notification bell to be alerted of our latest videos. And I'll see you next time.